Hey, I'm Sal at Deco Ranch. This is part two of our new rider series. We finished the first three categories in part one, so let's get started. Number four, choose lane positions wisely. Not much talked about, but holy mackerel, this is a good one. Because of the size of a car, every car has just one position in their lane. We all know that. If they try to move more than about a foot to the left or right, they're out of their lane. But a bike is relatively small and narrow enough that it has three positions or even five positions in one lane. Position one is the far inner side of the lane next to oncoming traffic. Position two is in the middle. Position three is on the far outside of the lane. Position one and a half is between one and two and two and a half is between two and three. That's five positions right there for your bike. As a bike rider, you'll most likely be changing positions frequently within your lane as you travel to avoid bumps or ruts in the road, tar snakes, manholes, car oil slicks in the middle of the lane, gravel, particularly on corners, a variety of obstacles laying in the road that may mean nothing to a car but could take out your bike, and more importantly, to put yourself in a safe position for the traffic around you to be better seen by traffic around you and to put yourself in a good position for your next turn or move. You will want to safely position yourself behind cars where they can see you in their mirrors and so you always have a way out if needed. Remember, you are invisible. Don't get too close behind other vehicles. Always give yourself escape space. Stay out of other vehicles' blind spots. Watch your mirrors for vehicles coming up behind. They may not stop. Watch next to you for vehicles that may suddenly decide to change lanes and impact your riding. And keep watch ahead for cross-traffic vehicles that may want to pull out into traffic in front of you or vehicles that may suddenly stop just ahead of you, forcing you to practice an emergency maneuver or stop. Remember, four-tire cars can stop much faster than two-tire bikes, so keep your distance. It's got some serious straightaways without having to stop. It has almost no traffic. It's got several circles. You could go in and out. This one I like because you can change directions on it. Yeah. We went around it three times. Um, Ugh. It's got some blind intersections. It's got some stop signs. I think it's it's fun for, you know, just... This was this is great. Did you know she got up to 16 miles per hour at one point? She was pretty steady between the 14 to 16. I saw her shift into the second early on. Yeah, it was good. I know, because there's, there's almost no traffic and you can practice getting some speed up. And there are some turns that, you know, you've gotten some speed up before and after them, you know? Oh yeah, I would... Without I, having to stop. Did you pick up on your turns? speed up a little bit because it's easier when you speed up and kind of lift a cheek. Mm -hmm. You're doing great. Yeah. You, you look good. Cool. Can I go home now? <laughs> I did it like I don't even know how long we've been out here but that was so long. She does a ton of stop signs, a ton of in and out of the little circles going in different directions. Yep. Um, the practicing that stuff. I thought that your I thought your issue was that you were afraid to go fast enough to smooth out on it. And so I thought I'd take you on a spot with like no traffic where you could practice moving, hey, like a racetrack. You did great. You, you picked yeah. a great spot. Yeah, but you could do this in second gear easily throughout yeah. this place. There's no throughout need for you to change out of second. Yep. Do you lose circulation in your hands too? Uh, if I hold on wrong, that's part of the practice. That's part of what we do. We practice and figuring out where to put your feet, where to put your hands. And every so often oh, I take my hands and I will just pull it off and just do this and then put it back on. Um, uh, this side's hard to let go of and as long as you're, um, cause you can't coast, you slow down. So when you're slowing down, this is the time to let go of this one. That side, um, is really easy to let go of. And that's the side that, uh, the motorcyclists throw down their two fingers as a wave. And when you pass a little kid, you do this. <laughs> they get excited. They like it. They get, yeah. Um, and you do fine. Turn the battery, the engine off, the battery off while you're here. So, not designed it. so it doesn't run the battery down. You're doing great. It and, reminds me of being on a horse. And they should, yeah, I agree. I think that constantly. I I'll was tell just you, telling when Jack you, the same thing yesterday. When you go a little faster on that bike, you'll feel better because it's more stable. It's going slow. I have to keep moving the handlebars to maintain the balance. When you go like six miles an hour, or eight miles an hour, then you have to keep moving the handlebars just to maintain balance. The faster it goes, the more stability it has. You haven't, the only time you would have felt any revving is at upper first gear. No, because I thought that was just me trying to go. 
The only no. time I really like got really unwobbly is when I'm trying to leave. That's because you're too slow. In fact, if you I can't just gun it. <laughs> you'll find as you get more confidence, as you start gunning it, your bike will take off stable. The the instability that wiggly, it's a it's a speed thing. Slow speeds make it wiggly. Do you want to try the same area? Are, do you like being familiar with the area or do you like checking out all the new little windy areas and seeing where the streets lead? Do you want to go in and out doing little circles and stuff? Do you want lots of stops or do you, or do you like the straightaways better? Straightaways. Do you like lots of stop signs? Or um, I don't like the stop signs. Do you prefer the blind yeah, intersections? She doesn't like the stop signs. That means we need to do more stop so signs. So the question is just what you, you need. <clears throat> it's like, I'm okay with, I can stop. It's just like the going, I can't go fast and I'm not going to go fast. Nobody's going fast. Yeah. Who's going fast? No, you do. You're like, stop. And I'm like this. Ooh. Shall we go? Okay, yeah. Alright, let's wander around. Do you want another circle around this? Or you're feeling confident in the straightaways and the big turns? She needs some stop signs. Okay. Okay, back on the road. We're back to weaving in and out of the streets of the suburb again. But what we didn't notice and none of us noticed is that when Stacy mounted up and uh, took off, her gloves were still sitting on the back seat of her bike. That's going to play a part in what happens next. All seems to be going well initially. We're starting back on a U-turn. Vi's making a large U-turn, which is okay for a beginner. You want to tighten it up as you get better at it. We're on the road. The glove falls off of Stacy's bike. Vi sees it. She focuses on the glove and loses her focus on the motorcycle. And here's what happens. Yeah, we checked the bolts. Okay, good. Okay, got a little bit so, scrubbed there. It got a little scrubbed. Oh, all she did is stop and go. <laughs> well, if you're going to drop it, that was the easiest drop you could ever have done. <laughs> it's going so slow, man. She's going to do it again. <laughs> okay, now that we're back on the road, let's finish up with our category of lane positioning. If a large truck and trailer is coming towards you, you'll want to move away from the truck so the huge windstorm created by the big rig won't push you and your bike around on the road. And I'll, I'll tell you, there's a lot of wind that just whoosh hits you when that big rig goes by. Stay far away from those big trucks. Staying in a lane position close to the big truck with its trailer would create a safety challenge as the turbulence from the rig hits you and may even try to suck you and your bike under the rig if you're too close. Number five, stoplights. If you're first at a stoplight, do not, and I repeat, do not jet out into the intersection the instant the light turns green. That's a good way to get killed, which would really mess up any chance for a next ride. There will frequently be a driver from the cross traffic side that runs a newly turned red light. This happens all the time. If that light turns green and you jet out first into the intersection, there's not much chance a speeding vehicle can miss you as it runs a red light. You will be in the right with your green light, but it does you no good if you're not alive to tell people that you had the right of way and the other vehicle didn't. Be very careful if you're first at a stoplight and watch for possible bad drivers in cross traffic before you enter the intersection. 
watch the stoplights to see which direction of traffic had the green light right before it turned green for you. Because most likely, that's where the bad drivers will be coming from, and that's where you need to watch. Staying alive, that's your number one priority. If you are the only vehicle at a stoplight, be aware that motorcycles often do not trip the monitor for the stoplight. This means the stoplight doesn't know you're there, and you could be sitting at that light for a very long time until another vehicle comes along behind you to trip the light. There are things you can do with your bike to not get stuck as the only one at a stoplight that ignores you. One, most stoplights in the USA have sensors underneath the road near the stoplight. The most common sensor is the inductive loop sensor, which registers when metal is stopped over it. Motorcycles often get ignored by these sensors if the sensors are not set to the proper metal sensitivity. Look for lines cut in the road where a car tire would go and try to stop on those lines to trip the light. The lines are usually flush with the road so it won't create an issue when riding on them. Some lines are covered by asphalt. They could be two inches to four inches under the pavement. If you see the line for a sensor, try to park on the sensor. In some areas, the sensor might be marked with a, an X painted on the road, or maybe a picture of a bicycle for a bicyclist. Think you have problems with these sensors? Think of the poor bicyclist at stoplights. Oh my gosh, they could be waiting there for a long time. Number two, some riders will purchase a big magnet to attach to the bottom of their bike, or they might purchase a green light triggering device, which is just a big magnet. If anyone has used this technique, please leave a comment below and tell us how effective is it. Number three, if you're waiting at a light that's ignoring you, switch lanes to a more frequently used lane when it's safe to do so. You can always circle back around and resume your direction. Some lights are programmed to just do straight traffic if no traffic is there to trip the sensor for a left turn. Some riders will look far ahead like you're supposed to do and they'll actually change up their direction before they get to that lonely stoplight. After they're past the light, they'll turn back and return to their original path and continue on their way. And finally, number four, some states in the United States have a law allowing you to run the stoplight when safe to do so after you wait through one or two rounds of lights without getting a green light in your favor. Know the stoplight law in your state or country. This concludes part two our second video. We still have one more video to go, so thank you for joining me. I hope you stay tuned and click on that next video, part three, for our final three categories. In the meantime, ride safe and keep your horses moving.